Hey everyone, I'm back. Yes, I took a little break from Creepypasta as I was running out of steam. However, I'm back and ready to go with 10 more stories for you all. This time we're talking about My Little Pony, the show that has outsiders perplexed by the very thought of it and a vocal fanbase of varying personalities and people. And hey, I have no problem with people enjoying stuff that's primarily aimed at a younger audience or not primarily aimed at their demographic. For example, I personally go nuts for Miraculous Ladybug and I adore that show, so hey, if you like My Little Pony, more power to ya. However, with such a large and diverse fan base, a lot of fanfiction ensues. A lot of it. A lot of it. Some of it even takes the form of attempted horror stories with the MLP themes playing a role in them, and today I've rounded up 10 stories that are, uh, interesting to say the least. Uh, quick warning, I haven't actually watched any of My Little Pony, at least the Friendship is Magic stuff. I've only seen like, uh, oh yeah, I saw this one back in the day. I definitely saw this one back in the day. So if I get any name pronunciations wrong or mix up the characters and stuff, I don't care, shut up. Let's begin... Number 10, The Brony. At any time, get on the internet and go to any website. Go on YouTube, Google, Tumblr... Facebook, whatever. Immediately or eventually, you will stumble upon many things related to My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Click any link it gives you. You will immediately, or over 9,000 years from then, depending on the quality of your internet connection, be taken to one of the many breeding grounds for the worst people you will ever meet. Bronies. No matter what you do, you will be dragged into a conversation with one of the bronies. The brony will begin sharing with you his experiences as a brony, who he believes is the best pony, how he became a brony, and why you should become one of them. One of them! One of them! As soon as the brony begins to discuss why you should join him and his insane friends, you must simply and clearly say these words. Sorry, but I'm not interested in your fandom. After saying this, log off immediately and watch, play, read, or listen to something without a mentally troubled fanbase. That's kind of impossible though. After doing this, you must not return to the site until at least a week has passed, or else the brony will catch up with you and pick up where he left off. If you fail to cut off the brony at the right moment, he will persuade you to watch an episode of MLP. One will turn into two, two will turn into three, three will turn into re-watching the entire series 15 times over again. You will buy endless amounts of merchandise, your computer files will be filled with ponies, and you will have officially become one of them. If you do as I instructed, you will gain the ability to tell good fan bases from shit ones. That, my friend, is when you become one of us. A homestuck. No! Let's get in close and see this. For people, for people with the mentality of four-year-olds, you have a bunch of fucking idiots in a ball pit. Number 9. The Death of Pinkie Pie. Bronies, get your tissues out. It's about to get emotional. Good morning, the worm your honor. The crowd will plainly show the prisoner who now stands before you was caught red-handed showing feelings, showing feelings of an almost human nature. Oh, wait, sorry guys, wrong poem slash song slash whatever. Here goes nothing with my bizarre tale. Why? Once upon a time in Ponyville, there was a mare. This mare's name, she came from the rock farm. Her name was Pinkamina Diane Pie. It was a joy to be with her. While it lasted, on one winter night came an extremely rough snowstorm. We were all struck with fame mine, famine, fuck. We were all struck with famine. There was no more food left. 
there were severe cases of hypothermia and frostbite. The snowstorm destroyed our houses. Several ponies were croaking. The snowstorm leveled our ponyville into a tundra. No, seriously! But worst of all, she was dying. Our mare, Pinkie Pie. We all shed a tear, for our mare was dead. Her husband came at that very moment, his name being Cheese Sandwich, sharing both their last French kiss. Both were now cold, lifeless corpses. I could feel the cold. Every pony around me was dying. I was now alone in this world. How could this happen to me? Everything's fading out. It's all over for Ponyville. Shakespeare, get out of here. We have a new sheriff in town. Number eight, Fluttershy's Lullaby. This story begins on one Friday night when the author is home alone watching Adventure Time. The power suddenly goes out for 30 minutes, and our protagonist is angry because they missed the new Annoying Orange episode, but they knew they had it recorded on their box, and were immediately intrigued when they saw that another show was recorded on it as well. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. What a surprise. How the box was able to record these things despite the power being out is anyone's guess. The recording started with a commercial that said, go away, but the author chose to ignore it. The author immediately wondered if they were even watching an MLP episode, for whatever reason, and decided to check the description of the show, which had now changed to Fluttershy's Lullaby, You're Too Late. The author was horrified by this most, uh not scary at all happening, and tried to unplug the TV, but the TV never shut off. Ooh, spooky! The fillies, which are baby ponies, I think, were getting ready for bed, and Fluttershy asked them if they wanted to hear a lullaby. In true Lost Episode Creepypasta fashion, when the lullaby started, the screen flashed a dead body of a young child with a red bow in her hair. It was Apple Baboom! As the song carried on, another dead body was shown of a female child. The author nearly fainted at this sight, but the song kept going. It's the wrong it's. Time to lay your fleshy head, sang Fluttershy, and a loud scream filled the room. The author knew immediately that it was Sweetie Belle being gutted and killed by someone. Gutting someone does imply that they're dying, you know? Three fillies were now shown dead in a pool of blood, and as Fluttershy finished the song with the words, Hush now, quiet now, your parents are dead. An image very much appeared on screen of the author's parents brutally murdered, with two words written in blood under them. Goodbye, son. Our protagonist started crying before Fluttershy assured them that they're next, and then the TV finally shut off. Then, the phone rang, and the author's friend on the other line told them that their parents were murdered, and that they were going to be sent to a foster home within a week because apparently he can just decide that. What a great friend! The author doesn't seem at all bothered by this and proceeds to go to bed. A week later, they are indeed sent to a foster home and find a box in their new room. When they open it, they find a demented Fluttershy figure covered in blood, with a note saying, See you soon. The author now knew they were next. Wait, if, if they're next, then who's after that? Could it be me? Could it be you? It could be anyone. No one is safe. Stay vigilant, people. Stay awake. Number seven! In my head! Last week I became a Pegasister. No turning back now. It's not a bad thing, believe me. Oh yeah, sure, I'll trust ya. I just don't really know how to go about telling people about my experiences. I figured posting it to a website would be the best way to spread the word. Just in case I'm making a big fuss over nothing. Oh, you are definitely making a big fuss over nothing. I started watching My Little Pony for fun and boredom. At first I was somewhat interested by the brony community. I couldn't make sense of why people would like a show about cartoon ponies. To this day, I don't really understand how this show can grasp the attention of the masses so effortlessly. It was not until I was almost at the end of the first season I noticed certain things happening to me throughout the day. Every time I closed my eyes, ponies. Only for a split second. 
Every single time I blinked or flinched, a pony popped up in front of my eyes. It do and seem like much when you think about it, but something just creeps me out. It's not just the ponies you see in the show either, it's like my brain is subconsciously creating ponies whenever I stop watching the show. So, to all of you who actually watch My Little Pony, can you attest to this phenomenon in the comments? Is this really how it goes when you start watching the show? I have a theory. A game, no. Not a nice one, but a theory nonetheless. My Little Pony is a virus, like a computer virus. It's the only explanation I can come up with regarding the ponies in my head and on the screen. All I know is that bronies and Pegasisters draw amazing fan art, write amazing songs, and have the largest fan base. Oh god, this is turning into brony propaganda, ain't it? I know how ridiculous this sounds, in all honesty, this is the best reason I can come up with for this community. The My Little Pony virus sounds almost desirable. When you consider how talented this community is, this theory makes so much sense. Oh yeah, definitely. Me, for example, an intellectual. <laughs> Most art I produce only goes as far as stickmen, but when I start drawing ponies, I can make them look so close to the characters in the show. Whatever this is, it isn't good. I still can't escape flicking from episode to episode of the show. It has a way of drawing you in, holding your attention in its hoof. No, 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 its hand. My head is infected. I can't escape. My life is run by ponies. In the end, I'm scared. I think I'll just sleep. Maybe watch a few internet videos. I don't know how much longer I can keep going. Goodbye, every pony. Good night. This person was never heard from again. Let this be a cautionary tale, dear viewer. A PSA, if you will. My Little Pony. Not even once. Stop it. Get some help. Number 6. My Little Pony Equestria Girls Director's Cut. Let's go back to the year 2013, shall we? Oh man, yeah, I remember those days. That was when my channel started taking off for real. Where did it all go wrong? My Little Pony Equestria Girls was a movie that caused me a lot of buzz since 2013. I know, right? That was terrible! One day, my pals told me that there was an unreleased director's cut of the film. The story starts with me at eBay buying the copy of My Little Pony Equestria Girls on DVD. Then, I saw the copy of it. I buy it. The package arrived that day. It was the normal Equestria Girls DVD that you will know, but when I looked at the back, I saw some words written on it with the red sharpie, Director's Cut. I got out my DVD player and popped it in. Man, I just wanted to take it back. The logos popped up as usual, the plot of the film was different. You know in the scene where Twilight was having dinner? Well, when it goes to the table, it was just frozen there. It couldn't move at all. It just stood there, unmoving. The only audio was the sound of buzzing. It then cut to the scene of Rarity, Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, and Applejack walking. However, the scene just keeps going on. Then, it cut to Sunset Shimmer walking in the long street. She was breathing, she then took his last bit of breath and walks away. Twilight was meeting Flash Sentry, then Sunset Shimmer appears and kills Twilight by chainsawing her in half and crushing him. The, f the head of Twilight rolls around Sunset Shimmer. Instead of the credits rolling, there was a sick video clip of the man with the chainsaw in his hand. He said the sentence to the viewer. I am going to kill you. As he turned on the chainsaw and swung it at the TV screen and then static came on and the DVD ended. I then took the DVD out and ripped it in half. I called Hasbro and they mentioned that it, the director's cut wasn't released. Be careful. If you find the film with the same DVD, don't watch it. Just destroy it. Well, that's pretty violent, wouldn't you say? Number five. King of Equestria. Alright everyone, this story is pretty long, so if you don't mind, I'm just gonna power right through it as brief as possible. Grab some popcorn if you haven't already. Hey, I'm Michael, a normal teenager. One day I got home from school and there was a portal in my room and I thought, fuck yeah, and I went through it. There were colors everywhere as I fell through time and space and landed a minute later on a hard ground. 
Everything was all colorful and I looked around. The magical place seemed to be filled with these weird colorful creatures like ponies or some shit. And I'm like, holy shit, I must be in Equestria. I landed in some town and looked around at a castle in he distance. That must be Canterlot, I yelled. And then I realized I was the only human in the world and therefore the most awesome. All of a sudden I got surrounded by a beam of magic light and then thrown to the ground. When I opened my eyes I wasn't a human guy anymore but I was an alicorn. I was so awesome as I looked at my new body. I had an electric green striped mane, all jagged and muscly black body and bat wings that were also black. I had a really giant horn and could do the best magic in the land with it. I also had a cutie mark that was a lightning bolt dripping with blood and it was f***ing awesome. All of a sudden there was this pink pony with curly pink hair coming at me and I'm like hello pony. She didn't say anything, she just looked at me all lusty and I introduced myself. I am Lightning Thundercrash. I was a normal human teenager but now I'm a pony in Equestria. Her eyes got wide and she's all, wow you're so awesome, you look like such a badass. I was just like, yeah, nodding my head like, yeah, who runs this place? She's all, Celestia and Luna the princesses. I'm like, I have to defeat them to become king of Equestria. I put the pink pony on my back and flew to the Canterlot castle and kicked down the door with my strong leg. I yelled, Celestia, where are you? I'm here to become king of Equestria. There was no answer, so I used my magic to find Celestia, who was in another room making out with Luna, and I'm like, oh shit, that's hot, but I have to defeat you both now. I blasted them apart with my magic magic horn and slapped them with my wings and hen I kicked Celestia in the gut and pushed her into Luna who I kicked in the gut also. I defeated both of them and went to my throne until the pink pony stopped me and she like, you can be the king of Equestria, you have to defeat all of us. Pinkie Pie showed me all of these ponies from Ponyville behind her and said I had to defeat all of them and I'm like, yeah, bring it on. Rainbow Dash came flying at me and I kicked her in her lesbian globes. <laughs> then Twilight Sparkle came at me and I had booted her across the room and I was like, I'm the most magical bitch. I hit Fluttershy in, in the face with my hoof and she cried as I ate her body right in front of her. I paused for a second to have sex with Rarity. And then I kicked her too with my magic blast and I ate Applejack because she is an apple after all. I also threw Pinkie Pie put the window and she screamed as I sat on my throne. I was the king of Equestria. From my first order of busyness, I said that every pony in Equestria had to learn how to use a gun and sword things with it because now all ponies have to be badasses just like me, Litning Thundercrash. I got the biggest gun because I was the king and it was red and black and shot Litning and fireballs and I would use it against any pony who tried to take my throne from me. Then I gave Rainbow Dash a big black gun and she, <laughs> and she already knew how to use it because she's a lesbian. <laughs> I gave Pinkie Pie a chainsaw because that bitch was crazy and she could saw everything and it would be awesome. I gave Fluttershy a squirt gun that shoot at water because she can't do anything else. Then I gave Rarity a sniper rifle because she can kill people from far away and she wouldn't have to get dirty of anything and she really liked it and offered to make out with me because she was so happy but I'm like nah bitch I have to run a kingdom. Oh what a gentleman. And then I gave Twilight Sar Sarpkle a handgun with a silencer because she wanted to be like a secret agent and I'm like okay that's pretty badass here take this handgun with a silencer. Last but not least I gave Applejack a hunting rifle because she's a southerner and really good at hunting things like apples. Then I had everyone all gunned up and I told the rest of Equestria to watch out because your king will kill everyone who revolts. I got to stay in the castle the whole time and Celestia was my own private sex slave and I got to keep her all the time for myself and she really liked it because it was me and I was the greatest of all time ever. I got Luna to cook for me all these yummy ass foods and I ate all of them and I ate all the cakes in front of Celestia and that bitch didn't get any. They were so tasty because Luna made ham and she's a really good cook and she loved to cook for me because I was the king and it was an honor. And so I got to be king of Equestria forever and it was awesome and I was immortal. <laughs> meh 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 I need a thousand words blah blah la 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 there we go I think. What, what, was this a school assignment or something? Jesus, I hope the guy who wrote this handed it in to their teacher. I would have loved to have been that teacher just reading through this firsthand. I wonder if their parents got involved. Number four, Brony Maker. What is this? This is gonna be a story about a machine that produces brony clones? There was a boy named Dylan Reeves. He watched My Little Pony every day. Not just the new episodes, he was always catching the reruns. Dylan got scared. He knew that tomorrow he had to start 9th grade. He cried so hard because he wanted a pony for his birthday. Daddy, I want another pony. He knew he was not going to get it for his birthday. He went to school. Dylan, Dylan wake up, Dylan's mom said. Mom, I was waiting for my My Little Pony song to go off. On the bus, Dylan was humming the MLP theme. Some girl in the 7th grade called him a wuss. Dylan took out his horn and said, Pegasister for life. Dylan hid during the day. He kept saying to himself, It's okay, it's okay. When he got there, he met a boy named Jimmy. Jimmy said, I do not you. Dylan said, Hi, I'm a brownie. Jimmy asked, 
What's a brony? What is a brony? Dylan whipped out his iPod. This is a brony. Jimmy said, Wow, this is awesome. I know. Ten days later, Dylan became the brony god. Rise up, bronies. That's right, everyone. It's time to rise up. Where are my bronies at? We gotta start an army of bronies and retake Constantinople or something. Where are my bronies at? And by that I mean pop brownies, but where are they? I need them. Stop it! Number three, the Hogwarts ponies. Yep, that's right everyone, it's crossover time. Harry Potter, friendship is magic. Literal magic. Author's note! It's the seventh year in Hogwarts, and Snape has taken over Hogwarts, along with the Carol siblings. But when the main six attend, will they be able to stop them with Harry and overcome Voldemort? You know who. Amicus was standing at the top of a stool, facing the Gryffindors and Ravenclaws. As you may know, shouted Amicus, the Cruciatus Curse is a torture curse. He shouted again. I want you to practice the curse on your fellow classmates, he screamed. Well, at least it's somewhat accurate to the book, I guess. Everyone whispered, and Applejack went with Rarity, Twy with Pinky, and Fluttershy with RD. Now, he screamed. At the same time, Dean was slammed to the ground by Justin <laughs> Flinch Fletchley. Crucio, screamed Applejack, hitting Rarity in the chest. She screamed and she wriggled to escape. Crucio, screamed Pinky, instead hitting Amicus. Who did that? screamed Amicus. M -m -m me Pinky whispered. Cru! screamed Amicus, but the door flew open as Amerio screamed Expelliarmus as he disarmed Amicus. How dare you do that, Amerius, shouted Amicus. Ava! he screamed before he realized he had no wand. A killing curse? Guess that wouldn't do good, he politely said, infuriating the Caro. You should respect other people, especially when you are a mudblood, Amerius chuckled. Amicus quickly grabbed his wand and shouted, Crucio! Not before Amerios managed to shout, Protego! The class stood wa- oh, this is so fucking riveting, isn't it? The class stood watching. Fine, go, take your filthy students, Amicus cried. Very well, he said. This is so fucking confusing. The class were relieved and Pinky was bubbly again because of Amaro's. Amaro, fuck. I think I would make sure the Crucio is not used at all, as I am more powerful than Snape in jewels, Amaro said. And... That's the end. No Voldemort cameo? Really? What was the point of all that? Number two. My Little Pony, the scary movie. Oh, it says scary in the title. That way you know it means business. I, I love, love My Little Pony. pony. One day I found a DVD saying My Little Pony, the movie. I, I thought it was the scary movie. What kind of tomfoolery is this? I took it and watched it. Why I did it? The plot was about Twilight Sparkle turning into a freakish creature known as Gurla. It was an upright pony with five tentacles coming out from each hoof and a shorter snout. She was in a world of freakish creatures like her and there were freakish versions of the other five ponies. They joined together and fought a fiendish creatures like the others, but with black eyes and wings. There was some school stuff in it, I don't remember everything. It was scary and creepy, but at least the songs were nice. The actual title was something like Equash Trial Gurlas. That's it. What is with these stories ending at completely random times? Cliffhangers for the star studded sequels? Number 1 Life as a Pony. Life as a Pony by Crazy Brony 505 Well, that's a fitting username, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Hello, my name is Crazy. I'm a pony, I grew up in a pony as slim, that's where my life begins. While I was little, I had a friend named Josh. He was a filly, I had no other friends besides him, I never had seen light until I was 20 wait, wait, what? Josh? 21? What? I got to see Philadelphia. I had so much fun until I killed my first hooker! 
Really fun! I stole 7,000 pony bucks, then I went and bought a gun, killed a whole town, and then I... Then some I met Slenderman. He also owes me 50,000 pony bucks. That was drugs, while wow, thanks. Oh. Nice. That was probably the worst thing I've ever read. Outside of my YouTube comments. And that was it. Was that fulfilling to any of you? I hope. Or not. Whatever. I'm confused and scared and what is even real? What What is existence really? Why are we here? Where did we come from? Why do people like the Chainsmokers? Thanks for watching everyone. Check out my, my Twitters, my, my Snapchats. How about that Patreon page, hmm? Yeah, thanks. Good night, everybody. Stay awesome, everyone. Good... Good... Bye. That was something.